I recently found this older monitor, which was not working, but it's looking decent, so why not try to fix it? So before we start, I'm almost for 100% sure that the problem was caused by damaged capacitor. What is capacitor, I will explain in a moment. For this assemble we will need just a screwdriver and little bit of patience. And we can start by slowly removing screws from monitor stand and then you have to open screen bezels by inserting small flat head screwdriver between two parts and by applying a little bit of force you should hear clicks. Repeat this process all the way around and then first part should be free. Next you can pull it off but be careful to remove LED indicator and buttons attached to front panel before doing it. Now repeat these steps one more time for screen itself and you should be able to have just LCD panel with electronics. Keep in mind that almost every monitor is different, but in general all steps are similar. I really recommend taking picture of cable connections because you will have to disconnect some cables and if you forgot connections that you unplug, you will be screwed. Now remove these four screws to expose controlling board with electronics attached to it and you will see all parts. Now let's talk about before mentioned capacitors. If you are not interested, just keep to this part of soldering. Capacitor is made out of two separate conductive sheets, for example aluminum foil, and between them is non-conductor, also known as dielectric material. With this basic knowledge, we can build our own by sticking two metal sheets on paper from both sides. Its symbol is presented as construction of capacitor itself. It looks like these two metal plates, between which is nothing. But for what is capacitor good for, or how did it cause this failure? Imagine capacitor as tiny battery, which is charged up by pulsing voltage from transformer. When it's charged up, it starts releasing its energy when it's not being charged. So without capacitor, you won't be able to turn the monitor on, because voltage will jump from 0 to max 50 times per second. This is because there is alternating current in our sockets provided by power plants for efficiency reasons. Alternating current is also very important because we can use it for such a thing as transformer. You can learn more about transformers on good old Wikipedia. But for now, you only need to know that it is able to change voltage. Next we need to change alternating voltage to direct by so called rectifier. Ok, now let's focus again on capacitors. Each capacitor is rated for certain voltage and has its capacity rated in farads. Most manufacturers are using the cheapest ones because of business. This has mostly short lifespan because they are underrated or placed in warm spot which can dramatically decrease its lifespan or are simply piece of crap. So if you are experiencing same problem, try replacing these capacitors. This was simple explanation because it's quite complicated to explain this in a few seconds. Let's start with repairing process, but first of all we need to know what is damaged. So let's take a look at electronics board and we will look for bulky capacitors. As you can see, these are looking fine, but these two will have to replace. I recognize it by inflated heads of the capacitors. As we can see, these two are rated for 1000 microfarads and 16 volts. So I recommend buying something a little bit better, for example 20 volts for longer lifespan, but be careful, higher you go with voltage, bigger the capacitor will be. And as you can see, these capacitors has grey stripe at one side. These are polarized electrolytic capacitors with higher capacity because in between metal sheets is tissue soaked in electrolyte. That means you will have to watch out where is plus and minus. You can buy these capacitors on eBay or in local electronics store and they are very cheap. Mine too cost me 13 cents. Also for repairing we will need soldering station. I recommend using something like this, but my tip is totally destroyed, so I will use my old one. Then we need soldier and soldering flux. Links for all these parts will be in the video description if you are interested. Now locate connections with capacitor leads and you can start by hitting up connections by soldering station. I was also using soldering suction pump, but you don't need to use it because in this case it was anyway useless. If you can't pull off the capacitor, also remove glue around it and if you melt both connections really fast, capacitor should go easily out. Repeat same steps for another one and we can replace our old capacitors by new one, but don't forget to line up grey stripe with black marker on board before inserting capacitor. As you can see at this picture, 5 more volts and the capacitor barely fit. If you are ready, take your soldering station and dip dip little bit into flux where it heat up for better connection and now place your hot tip onto board where will be connection and start adding soldering iron until will be whole connection covered by shiny and melted solder. 
Use same steps for another one and after a few tries, if you are doing this for first time, you should be done. But connections must be strong and shiny. If you don't heat up joints enough, you will create cold joints, which will conduct electricity really bad or not at all. After you solder everything, strip off exceeding leads with pliers and you can start by screwing port into its place. And afterwards, if you want to, you can try if the monitor is working by plugging video and power cables. But be careful, because you are playing with high voltage and do this at your own risk. And as you can see, my is working without any problem, so I can continue by putting screen into bezels, screwing back LED indicator and connecting back cables, which we unplugged before. Then put last renaming piece, which is rear cover with monitor stand and you just repair not working monitor. When I plugged this one into my PC, I was really surprised how high resolution panel it was and some guy just threw this into garbage. Also things like viewing angles and color was pretty great. Only one thing left to repair and that is power on button, which is not working always for the first time, but if you want to, you can replace it. They are really cheap, but that's the project for another video. I hope you know something new and if this video was helpful, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Bye!